Hey guys, I'm going to show you how to replace the vibrating sensor in the seat in a GM Silverado. However, the Tahoe should be very similar. It uses the same part numbers. This is a new replacement seat vibrator. It costs about 30 bucks. Comes uh, one unit complete with the connector. Uh, both sides of the seat, the left and right vibrator, are the exact same part number, so you don't have to worry about it. Uh, there's an issue, and ignore the vibrator has been broken off on, on this one. Uh, but you can see right here, this is actually from wear and tear from the seat itself. Uh, GM did not design these to last. I've been reading online that uh, a lot of people have this issue around 30,000 miles with just general use on the truck. So I'm going to show you how to take apart the seat, uh, at least on the 2015 Silverado, uh, and get to the sensor. It's actually relatively quite easy, and the part is 30 bucks, so it's a quick fix for yourself uh, rather than having to pay a dealer to do it. So one of the first things you're going to want to do is just raise the seat up completely, uh, both directions. It's just going to help you gain access to it. And you're also going to want to slide it as far back as possible so you can lean in from the front side and get into the back side underneath the seat. On this back side right here where my finger is, there's a uh, Torx screw. Uh, way down at the... Uh, bottom of the panel there it is right there you just need to undo that screw I want to say it's like a t20 screw off if you come around to the back side uh, there's another screw right up in here uh, it's a t25 I believe and uh, you're just gonna go ahead and take that out once you remove both those screws you should be able just to lift up on the seat bracket and it should come out very easily just be careful of these little brackets here. You will snap them off. Uh, so just lift up very gently, it should all come out. Next thing you're gonna do is disconnect the wiring. There's two wires, there's one on the bottom here for the uh, seat controller. And if you speed the seat belt through a little bit, you can take that piece off and you can just set it on the center console. And that should leave you with the whole side of your seat exposed. The next thing you have is two little clips that hold the front of the seat down. You can just kind of pull on them and they should slide out and leave those dangling. You got three more of those clips over here. One, two, and three is kind of up tucked in. Uh, this back one, you may need a small like little flat head to help pry it down, but all you gotta do is pull those down. Once you get this corner of the leather open, you're gonna see right here is where the sensor goes. And there is a hole that allows that cable to route out through the bottom and through the pan. You can see right down here is another set of wire. You can get that to focus. That wire is for the other sensor. So we're just gonna run the new sensor through. And when you're running the new sensor, you're gonna feed the connector in through the seat uh, first. So right now I have it just coming out of the seat pan. And then feed the uh, uh, vibrator back in and then we'll route the sensor back through. But you wanna feed the connector through the padding, not the uh, vibrator through the padding. All right, I've taken that connector. There's a small little channel and I've just dropped it down through. And what you're gonna do is if you come back around to the back side, and you look underneath, there's the uh, factory mounted connector and there's my new connector. There's a little spot right there for the push pin that's floating right now. So I'm gonna connect those two things. All right, I've connected the uh, new sensor. It's kind of recommended that you do both at the same time. Uh, that's for the other side right there. Uh, I've felt the wiring, I haven't felt any issues. So now that it's all back together, I'm gonna tuck the uh, seat covers and those latches back in. I'm just gonna fill it all the way around the pan and clip those five clips that we took off for this side. To get the other side, it's a little bit harder to do, but you can reach your hand in between the uh, seat console to pull that side and the process would be identical. All right, I've gone ahead and put those uh, five clips back on. Uh, if you are doing the other side only, I still recommend removing this side panel because it makes it easier to access from, uh, you can reach in and do it all from the driver's side door. So the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and put the uh, bracket back on. I'm gonna untwist the seat belt, feed it back through, uh, slip it over, connect the two connectors for the uh, power seats, and then uh, put in the two torque screws. All right, I've now replaced the cover and both those torque screws. Seat belt's fed back through. 
it's gonna get caught up in the back corner you just got to work with it a little bit but it'll it should slide on fairly easy uh, you can now double check that you have control of your seat again do note that the automatic seat uh, movement will continue to work when the control panel is not there The last thing you're going to do is check to see if the vibrator works, and this one's actually more powerful than the other one. But right there, I can feel that my other vibrator is working now, and I'm not getting any warnings on the driver information center. And there you have it for about $33, which is the cost for this unit. And I would say no more than 10 minutes worth of time, even if it's your first time taking that seat apart. Uh, a T20 Torx. I used a T25 uh, bit for the back It's easy enough to replace and uh, I asked a dealer They said they would charge a total of $75 plus $55 for the cost uh, of the vibrator uh, for an hour's worth of tech labor uh, But that doesn't include diagnosing the problem for me. It was pretty easy. I reached my hand under the seat again, and I felt that um, But I missed this zip tie plug so as I started kind of pulling on it. I accidentally broke the, uh, the vibrator off. So what I'm actually going to do is tear apart this connector. I'm going to try and replace the wiring and keep this as a spare. Uh, I should have enough to solder on an extra little bit of jacketing. Uh, but otherwise, I mean, 30 bucks is nothing to replace to fix that.